sometimes they'll be in a, in a large place with a, a, a screen in front of them. All communication is telepathic on board these objects, as we all know. And they'll look at the screen and it's a picnic. And this is an actual event. I've talked about this in the media before. It's, it's an actual event. And there's people who are just standing around and gabbing and there's a picnic table and there's people who are maybe playing ball or, you know, or, you know throwing the ball to each other or something like that. It's just normal, absolutely normal. And they hear in their mind's ear, can you tell the difference between you and us? And the abductee stares at that screen and says, uh, difference? What do you mean? I don't see any difference. Everybody looks the same. And it's like, they, then they hear this telepathic voice saying, see, isn't that wonderful? Soon we will all be together. Soon everyone will be happy. That clearly there's some agenda that's going on of, of uh, engaging in not only the physical examination uh, of our people from our species that are abducted by them, but the, but the fact is they are clearly engaged in a hybrid uh, breeding program. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But there are all these hybrids, then it can follow, as, as some have interpreted, those hybrids, there's so many of them, they're going to take over the earth, that we're going to be colonized and by all these hybrids or whatever, they're getting prepared for the, the next space takeover. Or another interpretation about the hybrids, and this people get, is that it's to preserve some sort of life. Welcome everyone to Cosmic Convergence, an experiencer-hosted podcast that balances the introspection of the goal of learning the mysteries of the universe. Join us as we deep dive in the fascinating realms of extraterrestrial intelligence, consciousness, and more. I am joined with my fellow co-hosts, John, Christian, and our special guest, Jeff Selver. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Today, we're going to be going through one of the most diverse topics, the hybrid program. Jeff will be sharing some of his own experiences through the presentation and connecting dots between documents that were released over 60 years ago. If you've been involved in the world of ufology and discussions about disclosure, you may have come across the concept of the threat narrative associated with non-human intelligence, NHI. Today, we want to explore the topic by looking at examples for researchers who have gathered extensive accounts and data, particularly focused on the common theme of the hybrid programs. What is the hybrid program? The hybrid program refers to extraterrestrials who have been involved in creating human-alien hybrids through genetic experimentation or interbreeding. Contactees who have been abducted by alien reports undergo medical procedures, including extraction of genetic material, eggs or sperm, which is believed to be used for creating hybrids. These are different generations of hybrids. Early generations are said to be more alien in appearance with later generations appear more human. We just recently um, had our episode of Bernie and Barney Hill and one of the procedures that she did have was they um, injected a needle into her navel saying that they were doing a pregnancy test. So even accounts going all the way back to some of the first abduction cases have these elements of hybridization or medical procedures being done for these purposes. Fear is a natural response to encounters with the unknown, but by moving beyond fear, we allow ourselves to see the bigger picture and understand the deeper realities of our universe. John Matt. The negative narrative from researchers, the hybrid threat. David M. Jacobs is a professor of history and an author known for his work in the UFO and alien abductee phenomenon, exploring the concept of alien hybrid program in his book, The Threat Revealing the Secret Alien Agenda. Jacobs perspective on the hybrid program is, is notably negative, which he believes in its concerning development. Jacob argues that the hybrid program is primarily designed to infiltrate human society and ultimately control or dominate it. He believes these hybrids are a mix of human and alien genetics are being integrated into our world in a covert manner. He contends that the aliens agenda is not positive and that the hybrids are being groomed to take over the key roles in human society manipulation of abductees. In his interviews and research, Jacobs frequently discusses how abductee reports being used in re reproductive experiments to create these hybrids. He views these as a form of manipulation and exploitation where humans are being used without their consent for the alien's purposes. Jacobs suggests that the aliens are emotionally distant and indifferent to human suffering. Threat to humanity. 
Jacob has expressed concern that the ultimate goal of the hybrid program is to replace humans with these hybrids or to enslave humanity under alien control. He believes that the aliens are not here to help, but rather to subjugate the human race. He says that the secrecy and the invasive nature of the abduction phenomenon is evidence that the program is not in humanity's best interest. He acknowledged that the reality of those contactees who have had positive perceptive of their contact, yet he has frowned upon the public taking this perspective. Hybrids are here and they're integrating into our society. This is not a speculative idea. This is the direction of the evidence that is pointing to, no matter how disturbing they may be, David Jacobs, walking among us, the alien plan to control humanity. Bias Interpretation Critics say Jacobs is interpreting the data through a biased lens. He believes that a malevolent alien agenda would influence how he perceives and presents the information from abductees. Confirmation bias may lead him to emphasize details that support his theory while downplaying or ignoring contradictory evidence. Jacob's conclusions are based off of only a few investigations of some events from abductees and not, and not the entirety of the life event. Example, below there's an image that has from one of his books, events investigated seven out of 13 for Kathleen Morrison. And you can see there's a list of the events that he has uh, actually investigated and not investigated. What are positive, what are negative experiences that the contactees are having? A majority of the contactees who really realized that the experience was beneficial and promoted growth has been seen by Jacobs as a form of mind control. Research into consciousness. At present, with what we know, phenomenon researchers who disregard conscious evolution of contactees are operating from a bias. Dr. Gary Nolan has found MRI imaging that a bundle of nerves, a uh, cauda nucleus, an area of the brain, associated with intuition has overdeveloped interactions and experiencers. He find his findings were consistent with multiple labs. I began to realize that their interest in us may not be entirely scientific. They seem to be involved in something far more profound, a merging of sorts, a coming together of two different species. They were not merely observers, but participants in something that could change the very fabric of humanity, of human identity. Whitley Strieber, Communion. Number two, accounts of the beings coming. John Stewart, in a recent new interview with a DARPA scientist who reached out to John, she states that there's no hostile action has been taken or they are benevolent. Quote, takeover is underway. I wouldn't call it an invasion, but more of likely an acquisition of valuable resources, i.e. of Earth and all it contains. This is not the same John Stewart as TV, but the uh, recent John Stewart, uh, who has been coming out with um, doing investigative research on the Victor interview and the potential um, 1997 alien interview. So he has been recently more active on social media, and he recently did have this interview with her, which was quite interesting. And this is not the only account of potential something coming. The hybrid phenomenon, as disturbing as it may seem to some, may actually be a sign of profound transformation in human evolution. These beings may be helping us to expand our understanding of reality, to bridge the gap between the material and spiritual, and to recognize our interconnectedness with the cosmos. John Mack. The John Keel documents and why they're important for understanding the alien hybrid program. So this document was produced in 1967 and outlines details of the hybrid program that are showing themselves now, telling us that they knew the entire time. So line four, the experiments. They are primarily engaged in biological experiments aimed at gradually altering the physical and emotional characteristics of our future generations, expanding their bases of operations and thwarting the, suppressing the activities of their enemies, other UFO groups racing to achieve the same ends. And this matches my own personal experience as a contact. I formed an agreement to partake in an experiment with gray aliens to discover my soul. And the elder told me we find it an opportunity to grow one of our own, as she said in the first contact event in 1993. In my third contact event in 1996, the elder said we put our seeds into human mother's wombs to make the fetuses grow up to be like us, matching the essence of this document. In line five of the very same document, 
Several different groups are in open conflict, but all have the same goals and are using the same techniques. Some of these groups are less hostile towards us than others. There is no real way to judge the friends from the enemies, so great caution is advised in all approaches. The long range plan, a very long range plan is being followed by all groups. That was said in 1967. It is now 2024, 57 years so far, which is very interesting. It was indeed a very long plan. And I was very interested in this line as well too. Line nine, energy based, non-human intelligence. Some of the groups involved are not cellular life forms, but are masses of intelligent energy, impossible to explain with our present day science. Controlled from a distance and reliant upon new energy changes, charges of energy from a distant central source. Many nighttime sightings of glowing orb objects are really visible manifestations of this energy group. And the entities that I deal with, though they are gray aliens, actually sometimes display themselves in this very nature as an energy form that's kind of paranormal and does display themselves as orbs, transforming into orbs. So this document has a very interesting outline of their nature. And uh, again, it just matches so many distinct uh, firsthand experiences with the entities. Purebred non-human intelligence. Line 17. The biological experiments consist of genetic changes. Pregnant women are treated so that their children will bear the desired characteristics, just like I was told. This is a long process and has been going on for many generations. Each new generation is carried further along the evolutionary scale. The next two generations will produce thousands of purebred aliens, born of mothers whose parents have been treated and sired by the aliens through artificial means. These purebreds will form a nucleus for a community of aliens who will gradually inherit the Earth and replace the entire present races here. Some of these purebreds are programmed, so they will be directly controlled and they will serve as leaders. Thousands of purebreds have already reached adulthood and are serving the UFO powers now. Thousands of others are sleepers. They don't even know that they are a part of all this. At the proper time, they can be triggered or possessed by the controllers. This line is so significant as it displays my own personal ex uh, firsthand experience. I woke up with my memories at the age of 41. It sounds bizarre to even say something like that, but that's, a, that's an actual aspect of my own life is that I woke up with memories at the age of 41 of having prolific alien contact. I'm without a doubt a sleeper, just as this document in 1967 describes. Plus the purebred, the, the method with which these entities are interacting with humanity, that they would have leaders on the ground. This was never a scenario of take me to your leader, this was always a scenario of people on the ground feeling connected with the phenomenon and having a desire or need to interact with them and having those entities benevolently benevolently interacting with the humans and you know humans end up becoming uh you know uh, telling the message is the better way to frame that and spreading the message with which they feel that they are connected and a part of this was never a scenario of take me to your leader the first point, again, I actually repeat this because it's so important that they understood this was how they would, you know, merge with our society. The first point, they knew the method the entities would manifest in our society, not as an official landing, take me to your leaders type stuff, but a subtle under the radar with individual humans feeling connected to the phenomenon. The methods of the entities are well documented, obscuring memories which can be done with such precision that someone like myself can literally wake up halfway, halfway through their life and have been fully in contact with the phenomenon without their knowing. I identify as a sleeper and was triggered. I engaged in an experiment that had a genetic change. As again, the elder said to me in my third contact event in 1996, we put our seeds into human mother's wounds to make the fetuses grow up to be like us. The last line at the end of this document, once the UFO powers realize fully that we are aware of their plans, they might feel it necessary to take immediate action. Therefore, it is important that this knowledge can be restricted to a very small group. Belief in the existence of UFOs would be the first step to understanding and believing in the more complicated and panic provoking general situation. It is thus imperative that the UFO existence remain discredited for as long as possible and that this knowledge be kept from the general public, explaining why the public never knew about the phenomenon. 
This line explains the decades-long secrecy and also the attempts for the DOD and CIA to isolate and meddle with the UFO community, making it difficult for would-be leaders to spring up. Though it is not in this document, contactees report over and over again that human management of the planet is the issue. This ends up making the whole approach by the entities make sense in the grander scheme of human existence, and could even be perceived as the kind and gentle approach to help redirect a species into a mind that expands beyond its borders through the nature of the phenomena. Can we trust the military perspective and wording? It should not be forgotten that the military industrial complex would see any change to US domination over the globe and overall state stability as a direct threat, especially during the Cold War. State and corporate interest would not take into account the destruction of the planet as its or its wider spread effects in the cosmos that has been shared with millions of contactees. Any outside non-human intelligence forces that are trying to guide humanity and help save our planet would not be trusted even if they were even if they told them the truth. The being said that they were clear that the being said that they were clear to our leaders decades ago, which lends legitimacy to the Kiel document all the way back in 1967. And the evidence for this consciousness expansion and benevolent action comes from the Free Experiencer Research Study where over 5,000 experiencers took a questionnaire. Only 11% had a negative experience with gray aliens. 29% were positive, 59% were neutral. And if you could stop your contact, would you? 84% said no, 16% said yes. They were asked, do you believe that ETs are bad, malevolent, or evil? 91% said no, and 9% said yes. Not just that, but consciousness expands after contact. This is not some head trip created by the aliens while they're taken into an abduction. This is something that happens after contact. A change occurs, just like Dr. Gary Nolan discovered through his MRI research. The question was asked, did you become more psychic? 58% agreed, 18% disagreed, and 24% had no opinion. And after contact, did you know things before they happened, even when there was no natural way to know? 64% agreed, 17% disagreed, and 90% had no opinion. And lastly, from John Kilmo, the doctor who was involved in some of the research, his quote, probably the most significant and surprising finding from this study is how very little negativity of any kind was reported by the experiencers. And this includes how very little that was dark, threatening, or frightening on the part of the non-human intelligences during the participants' contact or encounter experiences with them. This is in sharp contrast to how much of the ET UFO-related experiences depicting, ac depicted across the many decades of the published literature have been dominated by reports of sensational abduction-type experiences that are described as insensitive, unwanted, manipulative, nightmarish, and terrifying. Not just that, but people report experiencing love from the non-human intelligences. He states, a review across many of the other sections of the th these phase three results could add more, sorry, a review across many of the other sections of these phase three results could add many more examples where experiencers, according to their descriptions, felt love being extended to them by one or more of the non-human intelligences with whom they were in contact. Contactees describe compassion and love the beings have for them. Great care is given with the experience. Merging of souls. The dual identity is originally an indigenous concept that the soul can have multiple identities. Joel Nyman brought into the UFO abduction phenomenon he found that abductees had a side of their consciousness that they identified as alien. You literally feel like you have an alien inside you. It changed the language. The person has no longer an abductee, but was now a contactee. Susie Hansen, author of The Dual Soul Connection, The Alien Agenda for Human Advancement, provides a framework of the dual soul. Certain human beings possess a soul with two components. One is human and the other is extraterrestrial. 
This builds on the same individuals have a spiritual lineage that connects them to not only Earth, but also the non-human intelligence. It is not just created from a psychological response to the human that is interacting with the NHI, but is in fact a procedure done to the ethereal body of the human before birth. That can include the alien role in studying humans, providing unique ex experiments, and observing from the inside. John Mack's description of the merged identity with NHI. This was from an interview he did with Nova PBS. Nova, alien hybrid, what does that mean? Mack, sometimes along the way as you go deeper and deeper into the person's consciousness, in their experience they will discover what is called a dual identity. In other words, they are both human in one dimension, but they're also themselves and have an alien identity. That is particularly in this reproductive hybrid program, as if they're all together a part of it, in that they may, in fact, even experience themselves as aliens. One of the men in my book actually was an active participant in taking a woman from Texas up into the ship and being, and acting the reproductive function of the alien being, felt he was himself alien. And often the abductees will feel their job developmentally is to integrate these two dimensions or two aspects of themselves, the human and the alien, that the alien dimension is a part of ourselves, our souls, if you will, even from what we are, have been cutting off over centuries of human beings living on this earth in densely embodied form. The visitors do not come merely to frighten or bewilder us through often succeed in doing both. There is, I believe, something deeper at work. They want us to see the limitations of our current understanding, to step beyond the boundaries of what is known to embrace a larger, more complex reality. In doing so, however, requires us to confront our most basic fears, fears of the unknown, fears of losing our sense of self, and fears of change. In the end, it is not the visitors we must conquer, but our own resistance transformation. Them, Whitley Strieber. And thank you everyone for joining us tonight on this presentation. Again, thank you so much, Jeff, for presenting this uh, talk about it. Uh, just one of the things I wanted to discuss, and this is the uh, main aspect that I try to relay to people so that they can understand, because always whenever, especially as humans, when we look at this from the uh, outside view, like people who don't understand any of, any of this stuff, this is why I always point someone to like if they want to really understand this phenomenon to start looking into near death experiences, because I know in doing so they're going to look into an aspect that starts to explain the soul that, you know, we are a soul and we're just living in these avatars temporarily and that certain agreements can be made prior to an incarnation, if you will. A lot of what's said, especially in hypnotherapy cases is that even though from you know, the perspective of someone being taken, like there's some people who are taken and from their point of view, it was traumatic. They were like, I didn't deserve this. They took me against my will. But then, you know, you put that same person in a hypnotherapy state and you question them about the experience and you start to hear things like, oh, um, prior to this lifetime, I made an agreement with these beings to do this event. And they asked my permission first before doing so. Less fear involved. And usually when they come out of that experience of the hypnotherapy state, they have more of an understanding of what went down and there's less fear involved. They're like, now I see a bigger picture of what actually occurred. And that fear filter was just like the human aspect of myself blocking that from me because it was so outside the realm of what you would traditionally experience on a day to day that you don't even know what to make of it. Going from the poles, um, you can see that a large majority of the people see the experiences as non-negative and that they would like to continue the contact experiences. I totally agree. Um, the near-death experiences is, is awesome, actually. It's a, a great reference for this, and I think that's a really smart idea. Um, for two other reasons, actually. Um, I actually, funny enough, I just did a presentation yesterday on how the phenomenon inter uh, connects with the afterlife. So, And it's very much in relation to this because, um, first and foremost, if we're talking about dimensional entities, that's very science fiction for us, but not when you start looking at NDEs. Um, and you start noticing that in his book after, he was a doctor who's been 45 years of research into NDEs. And um, one of the things that he discovered is that 
in NDEs, people's sense of, of, you know, the senses expand out. So colors, they see colors that weren't there before. They hear sounds that weren't there before. So there's another, there's a, an extra sensory experience that the brain is filtering out on the physical level that everyone awakens up to on the NDE experience. Never mind life reviews. Life reviews are instantaneous, like an alien download. So the, the physics is oddly similar to how aliens interact with humans. Um, and the other thing that you're not just the other thing you're nailing that you're that isn't just about building a relationship before or prior to birth, but that the reason we're living out our lives and the whole thing I keep trying to tell people is, you know, every anything can happen to anybody. You can go through a hurricane and lose your entire house. And, you know, it's kind of weird. Like you don't think the higher self knew you, you were going to be put into a planet that that could happen. And there is a degree of, are things meant to occur to us? Are we creators in this process? And in all that research, especially in the near death regression research, um, that's what they discover that people actually choose lives. They choose to be born into certain circumstances. And then you're wiped out from that awareness and you go and live life as if you're a victim. <laughs> that's the real twist. Everyone kind of thinks they're victims in life. And really you're more of a creator than you think you are. And all this alien stuff is right in with that. You're a creator with this. And uh, yeah, and so many people lean towards being victims because they feel like victims in life. But in reality, there's a, you have to get on that NDE level where you start realizing people have plans in life and they're actually, they're designed to be in life on purpose. It's really smart to really your people towards that because I think that that holds a lot of answers. Uh, for alien contact in general. The connecting piece that I think is going on here is the aliens bend time in contact events, and then people come back with psychic abilities. Same thing happens in NDEs. Uh, apparently, when you look at all the statistics, people have out of time type of experiences in NDEs. They feel timelessness, time changes for them, the speed of time changes, and then they come back and then they have psychic abilities also. And I'm certain that this, this is kind of the connecting piece that time is actually not what we think it is and it changes and the entities themselves can play with it and NDEs kind of merge into it. And yeah, it's very fascinating. Um, well, first off, I want to say that, uh, you know, out of no disrespect to, uh, Dr. David Jacobs, um, you know, he's going to, he's going to do his research, uh, the way he sees fit and he's going to come to his conclusions. And, you know, we, I have to, not to make excuses, but I, but I have to look at it. This is, is that we're looking at including himself, we tend to look at things from a human perspective. So, you know, the, the shock, or at least the initial shock of a, um, of a contact event can be fearful to someone that this is the first time, you know, I mean, we've, we've all had experiences here on this, on this platform right now, all four of us, we've had our experiences. I've had some that were blatantly positive. I've had a few that were, at face value, again, might just be through my own human perception, uh, blatantly negative. Okay. But when we do research, I don't believe in the picking and choosing of said topics. So like when the graphic came up as far as like, which encounters Dr. David Jacobs has done investigation on compared to the whole sum that he could have done investigation on. It seems like he was, maybe he was like picking and choosing and maybe I'm wrong. And, and Dr. Jacobs, I mean, no disrespect towards that if you were to see this, but it just does kind of make me a little curious, like what outcome are you looking for? And we have to make sure that we try to go into this subject with the least amount of bias as possible. Previous episode that we had with the Betty and Barney Hill uh, hypnotic regression tapes and both Betty and Barney, through their different experience, but yet shared experience, it was fear. Right over my right, God, what is it? I try to maintain control so Betty cannot tell I am scared. God, I'm scared. It's all right. You can go right on and experience it. It will not hurt you now. I got to get my gun. Oh. Oh my God. All right. Oh. All right. That's all. Stop. I got to get my gun. Go to sleep, Steve. You can get now. It was fear 
first thing that that Barney says, I got to get my gun. I got to get my gun. You know, um, I can't stop looking at him. He's looking at me he's saying, keep looking at me. And then you have Betty. It's just a simple test. I don't know. It will hurt. Don't do it. Don't do it. And even though it won't hurt. And he takes a needle into my nail. And it's <laughs> and I'm crying and I tell her it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting, take it out. And, and, and then the leader, he goes over and he puts his hand, runs his hand in front of my eyes. And he says, I'll be all right. I won't feel it. Oh. And all the pain goes away who's saying, oh, you know, why are you putting this needle in my navel? It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. And then when they're both back in their car, well, even previous, Betty's like, you know, I want, I want the book. I want something to take with me to prove that this happened. And then she's like, please come see me again. I, 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 want, I want to have more contact with you. And Barney, as they're driving off, is going like, wow, imagine that, you know, we're just the universe is so expansive. Wow, no one will ever believe it. I, I wish I could join them. Real, like, conflicting, conflicting, right? So yeah. I can see on, the, on, the, on the, the third density, third dimension, human perspective, scary, I say, situation that's batshit crazy. Just batshit crazy. You wouldn't in your in your normal frame of mind. I don't think anybody would really ever imagine that happened. But it happened. And one can doubt that, but just listen to the hypnotic regression tapes. And those emotions that they go through, that whole range, I, I don't know what else what other proof one needs. That that's not just nightmare scenario. I mean, that was they felt it to their core. It gives me goosebumps when I listen to it. And they're a small, small sample, although publicly historically very significant. A very small sample of the amount of contactees. Jeff, Daniel, Christian, myself, others that might be watching this, spread out throughout the entire world that have had experiences like this. But I have to look at it. You know, one one could look at it and say, well, it was a negative experience for like let's say betty and barney and they were tricked they were tricked right. to, to thinking that it was a positive one because that was the mental manipulation that, that the extraterrestrials or the interdimensionals put or the grays put into their mind to make them susceptible to the next time that they see them or again it could be that the initial shock is then replaced by the understanding that no, it's not to torture you or anything of the sort. But then that there is what Whitley Strieber said, there's a communion between the human and the NHI and that they become one in some way, shape or form through understanding each other, right? And that's kind of how I look at it. So again, not, not to disrespect Dr. Jacobs, he's got his, his perspective and I know that he's deeply rooted in it. Um, John Mack had more of a more of a spiritual, like uplifting kind of um, overview about the whole experience after years upon years and, and rest his soul. It's a shame we lost him when we did. But his work continues through, um, even though you're not a psychologist, Jeff, you know, as an experiencer, abductee, um, the message goes forth and goes through. So, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, there's still a lot of questions, right? Um, I know that uh, some would see it nefarious about uh, gene manipulation, right? but yet humans do it. We do it to other animals all the time. So it's kind of like if it's in us and they helped create us, then we're just mirroring what they do. How come it's always acceptable for us to do it, but nothing else? And with the things that are going on here lately, especially in the news worldwide, where it just seems like uh, everything's kind of like the, the floodgates are starting to open up. Is there anything that's been said recently that might um, back up 
your own experiences that maybe you can you can bring up? Uh, wait, so back up because <laughs> I, I actually have two points. Uh, two points I want to make, or one point. Please make your make. points. No, by yeah, all yeah. means. Um, so actually, it's really like I really like the dialogue about it, and it's actually really good. And I always think that the perception it's this is there's something about the spiritual perspective versus the scientific perspective. The spiritual perspective actually says we don't understand reality. And actually, it's worldviews is what it is, right? It's a worldview and different humans have different worldviews. And you, it really comes down to two fundamental differences in worldviews, a materialist or a spiritualist. And if you're a materialist, you think you're the body. You also think you're an evolved ape. You, as we were taught, right? We're evolved apes or animals that have learned to develop who we are now. Yeah, and we just now we have technology that's over excessive and and all that. But that's that's an all normal and natural progress of evolution. And so you have a background worldview, and then yeah, you got it. If you have an alien coming in that's this powerful, oh my god, this is terror beyond terror. It's the same terror. That, a, that an animal feels, if you ever like uh, caught a, you ever have a bird fly into your house and it's panicking and it's trying to get to the window and it can't get it and you're coming up to it and you're coming up to it and then you grab it and it freezes, right? It knows it can't fight anymore. I know the fear of that animal because that's the fear of the aliens, right? When the aliens interact with you, if, when I'm on that field in, in 1993, when I'm 16 years old, the fear is this you could take my neck and snap me any minute if you, that's what you wanted because I have to surrender to you because you're way more powerful than I am. And it's, it's that fear. And that's the materialist fear, right? It's the, I am a body, oh my God. And you know, we have that, we're embedded in and that's part of our culture. But as a worldview, then there's the spiritualist worldview, which is that I'm not the body. And it's that what that worldview has, my own perception is limited. And there's much more for me to learn about perception, about consciousness, about, and, and there isn't a, there isn't a belief in expansion. And it may be just a belief because you have a faith that something else is going on. You know, birth and death doesn't make sense. Uh, aliens being here doesn't make sense. Ghosts don't make sense. So then you have a belief system that's kind of expanding it and you're taking it upon as a spiritualist. Okay. There's gotta be more to me then. And then I think that is what changes everything because what you're doing is you're relying not on your five senses but on another sense, which is intuition. And when you come down to it, you come to that spiritual level. Yeah, you got it. There's a, there's a, there's a conflict. Well, this actually is amazing. <laughs> Holy crap. This is amazing. And what you, what your, I know you're feeling is that these guys are actually, you know, evolved consciousness and you're kind of, you're feeling it. Their crafts feel good. Everything kind of feels good in their environment because they actually are evolved and you're interacting with an evolved entity. And so you actually know, I think intuitively, if I hang out with them, I'm going to evolve. And so you actually have a real good feeling around them, but there is that, that initial conflict that is, that is the conditioning of our own existence so it's worldviews i actually find to be the fundamental and then if you actually are born and bred and live in full three-dimensional world or a materialist worldview yeah you got it this is going to be nothing but terror <laughs> and i don't even know how to convince you you have to it's not about us convincing humans i think that's why it's always comes back to spirituality humans actually have to learn who they are and once they learn who they are they can understand that entities like this can exist um, my wife is a uh, professor and um, she actually had a paper and uh, it was like, oh, tell me something, something about spirituality. And the woman said, my uncle was abducted. She said, hey, you have to look at this paper. This is really crazy. Her uncle was abducted and she said, there's no way God can exist if alien abduction occurs. So you, it's really easy to see it like this will destroy people if they're holding on to a frame of reference of reality. But if you actually get that spiritualist perspective, then it's then you can put in the intense power and you know manipulate you know space time manipulation and even the need the need for hybrids can be put into this kind of frame of reference. It's, it's just kind of interesting. It dawned on me when you're talking about this. You're talking about materialistic view and in, in, in science in general and science, of course, um, science takes a viewpoint where it doesn't exist unless we can explain it exists. So it's or, like yeah, saying in a like, tube in yeah. a test tube, right? You can repeat right. it in the test tube. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, right, science right. will like, and I'm not bashing scientists. Thank goodness for you, for you people. It's great. James Webb teles Telescope is an amazing, is an amazing product, and that's brought to you by science. But what I'm looking at here is, it's like they always have this. Sometimes spirituality and science cross paths. 
Yeah, they do. They and do, it's, yeah. it's like, then they yeah. try to join, they try to join, but both schools are so adamantly against each other. Okay. It's subjective so, and subjective. So right. the, the, the objective doesn't like the subjective, but it actually, yeah, it does. It can merge, but it's the subjective element to it. That's confusing to the objective. Because if you have, for decades, I've been hearing about, you know, other dimensions, dimensionalities, you know, um, you had, uh, Carl Sagan talking about the uh, the fourth di dimension and stuff like that, about how if there's something casting, something casts a shadow from the fourth dimension into the third dimension, so you might just see part of it, right? And like we, we on our third dimension, will be casting something on the second dimension. If there's something existing on the second dimension, they're not going to be able to perceive what exactly they're looking at, right? And we've had this for decades upon decades upon decades. And now you're having all of this stuff coming out with Grush and everybody else going in front of our Congress, talking about, you know, interdimensional beings, the Taurus and stuff like that. There's that point yeah. where, again, spirituality, because it's that's a lot of stuff that we talk about in the spiritual community, can segue and become one with science. And they go, nope. And it's kind of like it's intentional. And I think that's kind of like our doing. Again, let's talk about the hybridization program. Humans do this all the time. Manipulating DNA, coming at, whether it be GMO corn or whether it be, you know, testing on pigs to make them photofluorescent and their ears and their snout glows green just for the sake of doing it. And all of these other kind of DNA gene splicing and, and stuff like that. Well... We could say, well, you know, we're the only ones that come up with that because as far as we're concerned, we're still, you know, science has said that we're top of the food chain, if you will, right? So we're the only ones that could do that. Well, if we can do that, then another being, another entity can do that as well. If we have our reasonings, they have their reasonings as well. So as long as we can look from the perspective that we're not the alpha, which is why it's important for disclosure and important for experiencers like yourself, Jeff, to come out and say, look, we're not the only ones that we can break that perspective about being the alpha and be like, wow, we're kind of mirroring everything that's they're doing in a way. And they're like the teacher. And I'm not just talking about like science. I'm talking about spirituality, mind frame. We can't ignore this. We cannot continue to ignore this because yeah. there's going to come a point in time to where it's just going to be in our face. I think there's part of our government that wants this out slowly and surely. And then there's another part that doesn't. Yeah. And they're it's, kind it's of like they're fighting themselves about it. Yeah. They yeah. are. And yeah, that's just a great reflection that. on humanity as a whole. But we just can't, as a society, continue to ignore this anymore. Yeah, I, I'm I'm certain it's because they don't they don't fully get it yet, and it's or they they can't communicate it if they if they have it on paper as a as a list of things, um, they still are like what? <laughs> like how do you tell people that? And I think that's what they keep trying to figure out. Like how the hell do you tell people about internet? Not just dimensions, but that it's here. It's a dimensional yeah. space right there, and it's interacting with you, and it may. You know, it's the same scenario where um, I'm convinced of the same scenario where uh, they put they were about to put a law in 2014, was it, in the UK that animals are sentient? And then they pulled it. <laughs> Why would they pull it? Because, well, the meat manufacturers, you know, like, oh, we're murdering actually is what, then what we're doing. And that's the type of stuff that I think like, oh, wait, if we actually tell people about these dimensions and tell people that we're interlaced with all this other life, uh, then we're at trouble of keeping the system we have going on here. Um, and it's, and it's, it's trickle effect will, will be disastrous for, it's a weird thing, but it could be disastrous for survival, right? It actually could be disastrous for the economic system, which keeps us all afloat and having food from China and food from Brazil and food from right. other places and clothes and everything that keeps there and your job. And right. It's, it's all kind of interlaced and, and we might not get the fragility of, of what it could do to release information like this. And I just think they have no plan. I think they can't figure it out. And One point I did want to make too, uh, was the, so recently Jesse, uh, was it Michaels, uh, on YouTube, he came out with a new, uh, interview with Lou. One point he didn't make in it was, uh, he said, he's like, I had an interview recently with, uh, one of the, uh, CEOs of, uh, one of the aerospace and we were talking about all this stuff and he was like right there 
But he said, if you were to bring a physicist or a scientist mainstream in, they would have no idea what you're talking about. Look at you, like you're completely crazy. And I, they genuinely think that there, there's an aspect of that has been stonewalled. Um, and part of it is that, again, it opens up this whole Pandora's box of, oh, no, they're not light years away. They're, they're here. Near-death experiencers even mentioning the ET beings themselves, that they're being yeah. shown in their NDEs. And yeah. one in particular correlated with uh, Jeff's story. Um, and he didn't, I'm, I'm guessing here, I'm just guessing that he didn't want to be labeled as an ET guy or crazy because he never really talks about ETs. He talks about his NDE. And he mentions that after this, like these big changes happen on earth to kind of like set us back on the path again to going in, about doing things correctly and uh, recovering from whatever happens. He says that these beings, we're going to be getting assistance from beings. And the interviewer uh, asked him, are you talking about ETs? And he giggles and he doesn't want to say it, but he giggles and he's like, all I can say is that they're going to be these beings giving us technology. Right. That Jeff Mara, right? Jeff Mara. I think so. And <laughs> he, and he says that, and it's crazy. And I've, started listening to other people. They just start talking about their NDE. And then all of a sudden they just throw that in there. And oh, by the way, we're being visited by ETs and they're assisting with this transition that we're going through. And a previous guest that we had on the show, Miriam Delicato, abductee, contactee, yeah. she, she mentioned that, she said, why is it that people who have an abduction experience after the experience become more humanitarian or they become like speakers and they start spreading this message of, what we're doing, what we need to change. Um, and prior to that experience, they were nothing like that. So, right. so that's another thing. I think that, yes, there are different beings with different agendas and things like that, but there seems to be a very core direction that we're going um, with a lot of these experiencers in terms of a better world, I, I'd like to say. I wouldn't say that a lot of these topics is like the hybridization program and everything else that's under this umbrella known as the phenomenon or UAP, you know, alien um, topic in general. Uh, doesn't really keep us up at night per se, but it's constantly, it's constantly going through our minds. And I mean that in the healthiest way. Um, you know, and now, so now we're having a lot of people that are coming out with, you know, stories like, hey, the James Webb Telescope, they, it, it saw this planet sized object change course, it's coming to Earth. You know, you've got all this kind of stuff, um, immaculate uh, constellation and, and all of this, these other things. And then as uh, Daniel referenced, we had uh, Lou Elizondo was had an interview with Jesse Michaels. And one of the last things he says during that interview is this, he says, well, you know, there's not much time left. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and you know, one could take it to where, Oh, that means that the end times are coming and some people will try to embrace that and say, well, it's the change we need and I'm looking forward to it. And well, one, you got to be kind of cautious about what you think about that, because as we've had a lot of people in Florida here lately, um, ask them how they feel about earth changes. And they're probably not going to be very happy about it. As a tornado survivor, I can understand that a little bit. When someone says just blankly out there, we don't have much time left. Time is not a luxury that we can afford. The time has come, we need to start having the conversation collectively. Jeff Selver, as an experiencer, how do you translate that? Because I know for me, I translate that is in, there's going to be a change of consciousness that's going to happen. And it's going to be one of those things to where if one is not able to go with the flow as far as that's concerned right like again i talked about before about not being the only intelligent life out there kind of scenario right that is going to break some people mentally so when i when my memories first came out the first thing i was saying to people is oh my god like people think that the problems of the future are going to be poverty 
and maybe climate change or whatever it was environmental degradation or or a war and i was like oh buddy it's going to be aliens <laughs> the problems of the future are aliens and it's not a problem problem it's the problem of uh no more guys and the idea of what that is, I think, is depending on how the, everything gets handled. And I think that they initially, that is the whole, like, we talked to you, you know, decades ago, and we told you the outline, outcome, so that when, when it comes to the deadline, you've changed and you made this easy. And I think they didn't make it easy. I think they were kept keeping it all and trying to say, how can we, I actually personally think that they were actually trying to figure out a way around it. And they were trying to figure out a way around it and not tell the public. I think that that's what they were actually trying to do. Uh, you know, gray aliens are gonna put, or aliens are putting hybrids on the planet. How can we get this to stop? And I think that, that they were trying to thwart things and uh, as if they were trying to protect, you know, to protect humans. Of course, it's these guys are too powerful and you're never gonna do that. So here's what the elder tells me. Now, I don't know that this event will be that. I'm convinced 2017 to 2027, a 10 year program of soft disclosure. That's how John Ramirez said it. That makes the most absolute sense to me. Uh, we're, we're kind of preparing the US population at least, and uh, by extension, the world population and to that reality that there is something, there is a presence here and that we need to explain this presence because if they show up and we continue to do what we did before in previous decades and they show up, there will be mass panic. That they were saying we have to figure out how to do this in 10 years guys and get the public on board at least to some degree so that way when they do show up how he framed it they are not panicking that makes all the sense to me that that's what's going on and um so the elder called it to me the great unveiling and what it actually is it's going to be so much disruption but it's the end result is an unveiling not of that aliens were here the entire time or not of that uh you know whatever it could be the government uh, hid that or or that there's a problem the unveiling is us that we are eternal entities that keep repeating in bodies that there's a birth and death life cycle thing that we're spirits that all this stuff is real and they'll have tech you can't even be a part of their society or understand them if you aren't understanding that and so there's this like kind of weird crossover part of a you have to just get there to understand that they're here and all the possibilities of dimensions and then the reality about who and what we are in that process uh never mind that we probably are alien hybrids ourselves the body themselves or the physical tissue body and then we're spirits put into that and that that's on purpose our own higher selves want that as part of growing and development and as you look into ndes when you look into ndes that's what's going on spirits want to be here on purpose to develop and so it's a whole thing that aliens seem to have been a part of and so the great unveiling is us, <laughs> that you've been thousands of years, you've been all these lives and there's all this history behind yourself and that you have a higher self and that's all part of the birth and death life cycle. And that's a, that's a, that's a developmental thing. And that's required to understand them. And so it's a great unveiling of yourself. How we get there, I think is the huge problem. And I think the idea of, of Lou Elizondo saying, uh, he actually says two things that are really striking to me. Um, one is, yeah, enjoy it while you can, meaning enjoy the ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. Because once you start realizing the aliens are the problem, your your problems aren't gonna be, aren't gonna be what you think they are anymore. And the problems will be much more extreme because it will be like, what the hell? When, especially when there's unknowns, we don't know what the hell this means, right? And, uh, and the other thing he says is, like, don't focus on this. Go back and love your family. Go back to, go and learn to like be loving with people. Go back to your family and love them. And that's still that's so NDE. It's like it's so it's so back into the basics of existence, which is learning to love, which is clearly what comes out of these NDEs. And it seems to be the higher level content about it all. There's kind of a weird ignorance is bliss. Enjoy it while you can. Think that climb the corporate ladder and get that education and think that you're part of society and enjoy your Facebook posts and and then once this all blows open, your entire thing will just <laughs> And I think it's for everybody, even contactees and experiencers. I think because even I, I just did a presentation where the elder showed me where they're from, and I explained this, and I had ontological shock. And dude, I've had twenty contact events, and I'm getting ontological shock. So just imagine the nonchalant individual human. So I think for all of us, there's just mind, there's, minds will be expanded and blown. And you know, we're talking about all of this, but it's nothing compared to them being in your lives every day. Or, or using their tech every day and how it will change and affect you. Yeah, Why do they tell you? Why do they tell you, Jeff? 
what, what did they tell you that where they're from jeff don't we yeah i like what it, i daniel daniel was a part of this actually and uh a shadow copy of the earth is by is the quick was the quick download to it but it's through the afterlife fields uh is our astral planes so different astral planes and then you go through one <laughs> you turn around look back at the earth the earth is in the future in a different timeline and there's a shadow dimension around it a an ethereal paranormal shadow dimension and uh and i basically like i'm blown away by it and by touching it i can now feel it here and so it is it's right here man it's right here and it's just in a different like i guess quote unquote frequency and it's really hard to wrap your head around it it really is even for me and um it's like a plasma dimension and um yeah it's black so the, like all of a sudden all the dark things about my contact events like how they like the shade and the dark the dark and the sometimes the crafts are pitch sense. black and yeah, and the eyes are just this kind of shadow eyes and they're like owls and this and also the fact that they're from an earth is why it makes sense because they're nature entities to some degree like mm -hmm. some people who have, who have contact there they play off with nature in some weird way and uh yeah it's really strange man and then the future i mean i had some of that in the contact event but they really pointed that out and then the timeline just an alternate earth that didn't have humans and the idea is I'm, i went back to that uh daniel we talked to you showed me that uh a link to that FBI document and they had again they had this knowledge in 1947 right <laughs> and that document explicitly says a, a, a planet that interpenetrates with our own but they're in an etheric level on that planet and that's what this is they're in a paranormal dimension a plasma dimension on that planet and it's interpenetrates which is the whole point that I think we're affecting them and and we're ignorant about it and our whole planetary stuff like everything about what we're doing is just kind of disrupting them to such a degree that we're threatening wow. them now and uh, though i don't know i don't and now the picture is so screwed up and i don't fully understand all the details a couple yeah. of interesting things there um, um my fiance we and, and i we we do uh we contact them through uh i say them loosely um my other selves will put it that way that's why i like to call them um through our spirit box and they have uh i i asked i asked um you know how how do how do they contact her and I through? And they said through the ethereal. They said it over the spirit box, which is interesting. So you've got this ethereal realm. Um, and then I wanted to go ahead and point out as well as an old astron astrology. Old astrology actually shows on the opposite side of the sun, completely opposite side of the sun, is a secondary Earth. The most wise information that you would get is the old time the old yeah. time spiritual yeah. shamanistic information yeah you know? it was intuitive and they were able to interpret it you got it i i totally agree with that the vedas understood a lot of this astral stuff and they had so in that document they used vedic terminology for it the locus and the talus right so it's the it's the realms beyond our own astral realm so that's i'm like oh now i get it because i didn't understand when i read that document years ago i thought that was very interesting but i didn't understand it now i understand it we have our, our astral realm that is our own dimensional space. It's our own from Earth to Venus, because I was on Venus. That was our astral realm. But then there's just other astral realms going out. And uh, yeah, and then they're stacked on top of one another. And you can just go through one and there's Earth, another Earth sitting there in a completely different reality. Some people say, oh, there's no life on Venus or whatever or whatever. But if that's the case and we have alternate dimensions and different frequencies where yeah. something can reside on another frequency, you could actually go to Mars and it's completely populated in another yeah. dimension. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's, that's, well, yeah. Jeff, you were talking about in your previous um, episode we had you on when you went to uh, Venus uh, that they had things were phased in a different, yeah. like yeah. There, there's, there's, there's an element to that. That's what I, that's what I, that's our, I'm certain that it's phased in our astral plane. So that was still our astral plane as if you could be, you know, astral project and then you're floating around earth and Hey, I'll go over to Venus and then there's the city. Um, so it's phased in our astral plane. At least I mean, that wasn't told anything. So I'm guessing to tell you the truth, but it, it didn't, it didn't, this was different, man. This was this, what I, what I said about this in the presentation is man, when you see a, another a planet in another timeline it's visceral like it, that's that's why because it's that venus felt like it was our venus just phased in our venus but it wasn't feeling like another timeline venus or a future venus and it's just so mind-bogglingly insane 
another timeline in a future. Like, I, I still can't wrap my head around it. I point <laughs> to the uh, Tom DeLong uh, quote um, in the presentation. So I, I use two. I use the FBI document, which says this back in 1947. And then Tom DeLong uh, says, he's talking about, because, um, so the night I got this information, I got it from her, from the elder as an orb, and I was communicating with it. And it's like, they wanted me to know this information now, kind of like, you know, obviously stuff is building up in the public. And um, and when I got the information, I shown it to me in this, in as if we traveled there together. But a half hour later, I was like, civilization alongside our own. Where have I heard this before? Civilization alongside our own. And then I had talked about Tom DeLong in a previous presentation, talking about the civilization alongside our own. And I went back to that, doc, that, that interview, and he's talking about time at the same time. He's saying how time can be different in all these different places of the universe, and that depending on frequency, you can be in different times. And he combines it with a civilization alongside our own. I'm like, that's what I saw. A time, a, a civilization in another time is what it was. It was in the future. So he, they know, man. They these guys know. They're in the know, and I think they just can't. Either I'm not clear what it is. I, it, it might be that that thing's coming, so they're freaking out how to tell people, or it's so complex they can't tell people. Or I think, as you guys said, the, uh, Daniel, maybe you said they bring in the physicist, and the physicists are themselves being like, "What? They can't wrap their head around it, so they just don't know how, how don't know how to tell the public." But oh, another part of that FBI document was they're thinking about uh, populating on our plane. I'm like, oh yeah, that's not thinking about it anymore. We know that they're coming, so they knew back then, right? They were told in 1947 that they thought about putting themselves here. Very mm -hmm. fascinating, man. And don't, don't, don't you humans, don't you humans out there that are watching this, fool yourselves to think that we wouldn't try the same thing. Because we would. Well, and what's going on here? Like, interpenetrates with their realm? So we just might be affecting things in a greater way. It is kind of ignorant to imagine mm -hmm. that we could kind of, you know, be as big as we are on the planet and not maybe affecting other things. And we didn't really believe in the spiritual, so we didn't know the other dimensions. And, you know, it's... I think it's just a bigger picture. And I think that they treat us with the compassion of, we just didn't know, humans didn't know. One of the pillars of the phenomenon is UFOs, NHI interacting with nuclear sites. Yeah, that is you got it. A hundred percent. Like if you're not sure about a certain subject, that is for damn yeah. sure why they would be giving us this information, right? It's not just their world planet, but like others as well in this, you know, not just our physical plane but these other realms of alternate realities you know there could be other planets that are on these other planes that we don't are not aware of because they're not actually in our plane you know and that we're affecting yeah. everything so and this is again this is something that i remember uh Susie going over as well when they were showing the uh the, the map of like the nuclear um radius yeah, yeah. holograms the, the galaxy hologram that's right jeff in your experience have have the beings ever mentioned or have you ever noticed or saw plans for this or anything like that? Because I know when you were talking with, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the twin where he says like, oh, we already warned you like all those years ago about what you were doing and you didn't do anything. Are they taking into the account that at the time and still present to this day, you know, we're currently kind of worldwide being run by like people that don't care, not all of them, but a large amount don't care. And it's just like holding people accountable for these people who don't want to share the information. So it's almost like the, the mass of humanity doesn't have that choice to do the right thing because they never knew to begin with. Right, right. Yeah, I know you're here. I hear what you're saying about this. And I think when it comes to stuff like this, I, th I, I, I used to live on this realm, or like mm -hmm. this kind of train of thought. I did, and back right. in back when I was a twenty year old, and that's kind of what part of the it's not written in my book, but it's part of the motivation of why I left was I was actually immersed in kind of government conspiracy theories as well too. So right. I had this idea to leave society, and um, and I think that that was on purpose. They kind of wanted me to go down that road, and in the end result, I do have that kind of step back where I I think it's much more to do with the system. It's much more to do with a worldview again, and much less to do with individuals. Right. And I think that you can't get out from uh, the example I'll, I kind of keep using is GDP, 
right? The gross domestic, I have an MBA, and when it all boils down, it boils down to GDPs. When an investor is looking at a country, they're looking at the GDPs, and they're looking at how much they can convert their resources into something with which they can be used for economics. You can't get away from that because that's the general consensus we have for our stability of our economic st structure in that functions on the planet. So you have a voice that comes up and says, we need to do the right thing. Well, what you have is the people saying, well, how can we make money from that? How can we keep the system we're using to do the right thing? And everything, right, recycling and, and the shopping bags and organic even is all structured within the system to keep it all functioning properly. But in the mm -hmm. end, that's not, that's what that's the head is that in the end you always have a forces it doesn't matter that it's maybe if, if you believe five families control the world mm -hmm. i don't fully believe that but if you even if you do believe that you believe five families are controlling the world it doesn't matter that you have a whole other force trying to fight against them because they're still doing within the system that's keeping everything afloat and so i i think it's i think it's worldview i and i think it's a human I really always come back to a compassionate stance that we're all learning that the guys who built the, the, the capitalist structure back in 1980, in the 1800s or whatever the hell it was, John, I can't remember the John Adams or something. I can't remember the guy's name anymore. I and mean, it was a book and they all kind of agreed, Hey, this is a great way of getting everything to everybody. That's how it all started. Right. And now we're at this structure that they didn't expect, right? They didn't expect globalization. They didn't expect robots. They didn't expect all these things that can make them more money and make people more poor. And now they're so more powerful, they're more powerful than countries. And that's thing, they, when they built this stuff, they didn't quite think all that through. And now this is what we're left with. And so yeah. it's really, I think that's why the reset is awful, <laughs> but that's, I think it's a human thing that we all kind of got ourselves here. And, uh, and, and it's all of us kind of learning I think that's how I, I know it feels, especially when you're at the butt end of, of, of someone doing something to us and we feel like, Hey, those guys are taking advantage of us. And I always come back to how could they do anything any differently when that's the world that they're like they're born into the world that they're doing they're, they mm -hmm. they feel they have to do that to some degree with which they do and i think everyone has a motivation when they do when you look at all their everyone's thoughts and feelings if you're going to get down to the nitty-gritty they're all doing something that they feel they have to do that's part of why the entities are involving themselves that's a good good answer too and i like i get frustrated sometimes but then at the same time i understand because again coming from ndes and stuff a lot of people have mentioned that it's for a time was supposed to be this way that nothing happens by accident that this is yeah. because a school for lack of a better term and this is where we learn but now we've gone through so much separation and fear and all that other stuff now it's about remembering who we are so now we're transitioning back and it's kind of like a normal cycle in the universe. That's yeah, just the natural flow of things. And I, I don't know, I, I just can't help but think, you know, because I remember in the last time you were you were on with us, Jeff, great episode, by the way, and I do appreciate you joining us for that. Yeah. Um, I, I asked the question, you know, well, what happens to the, why should somebody that wasn't around, well, as far as I know personally myself, I wasn't around when we dropped the nuclear bomb, okay, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, so why should I have to pay for the transgressions of the people before me um, with their their whole opinion of, um, hey, you know what, you had your shot, then you guys dropped the nuke, and so we're going to have to try to take this by the reins, you know what I mean, kind of for, for preservation of the planet and your species in some way, shape, or form. And I thought, well, that really isn't fair. But if I look at it this time around, okay, through this conversation, um, you know, um, we're all, we're all a lot of people, not all, not everybody, but a lot of people are feeling like they have no control over, yeah. you know, corporate greed, um, military greed, um, whatever have you, but we, we do, you see mm -hmm. it again, it comes down to numbers, you know, not economic numbers, it just comes down to population numbers. And it just comes to the point to where, you know, if really, if I was a sentient species that was interacting with human beings, I would say, what have you done to truly help yourselves move forward in a positive way? I think the interesting kind of question is, uh, I don't know, like, I, I think about this, Jeff, uh, John, Christian, I was like, I wonder if they've gone through similar evolution on their side of things if they had to go through a lot of 
turmoil, uh, mass extinction events. Um, you know, do they have do they have to become the you know alpha species, and then they have this realization of like, oh, we can't fight amongst each other. I wonder if they've gone through these ex- similar experiences. Like, or they had ATs through. come up have to them. Had, yeah, have they had like the mantis come in yeah. and be like, hey guys, like we need to chill out. And, you know, Secret like, hybridization on their behalf. <laughs> right, right, they were part right. of a hybridization program they didn't know yeah. about. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, we learned and, from the teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and again, the hybridization part, you know, it's, it's scary for a lot of people, but I really think that you know, like John, you were saying earlier that we do it all the time, but I mean, we've, we know through millions of contactees that they explain with grays of looking different, um, mantis is looking different. Jeff, you had your own, uh, interaction with the, uh, higher being or mantis figure, and he looked very different, um, from what other people's accounts are. So I think, you know, that whole inner evolution, uh, interbreeding hybridization process is probably something that is a universal thing that's happening. Um, that, you know, we're not really anything special in that aspect. It's just when you get to a certain point, it's like, how do we move the species that's intelligent towards kind of where they're actually able to succeed? I always think of the whole like present day issues as growing pains right the same way like a fort because i think what's happening is that we're becoming adults this is like we're 14 year olds old and you know the roman era we were nine years old and and now we're 14 and we're and we're just going through puberty and we don't even have the adult mind yet and and these guys are like 60 years old and and so we're dealing with like such a scale a lack of comprehension and growing and and learning as a society when I see all these kind of problems going on, I, I kind of just, I'm of the mind that this is us growing, like we're learning. And I, I don't hold it too much more than that. Cause I, unless like people have to deal with what's their heart, what's their, what's their passion and what's their, what's their drive. And so my drive is this happened to me and I have to talk about alien contact. I have to write a book and do all these things, but some other people, your drive is your drive is to you know figure out how to clean the ocean or your drive is to stop nuclear weapons or you know you, those are your drives you have to do it. you can't do it all and so but you can definitely do something if that's what your drive is to do and i think that that's very real and right but but as a person who's who's you know the world is swamped with this stuff um i focus on protecting my mind and i think that that's a big a big element because you you can't change a lot when you yourself are are caught in all the all the dramas and all the problems that are going on and so i really do work at you know when i see these issues i see mass murders i see uh, wars continuing on and people starting wars for reasons that are awful um then there's nothing that i can do about that thing then i you know this is us growing this is the humanity species growing and in in part, you know we're 14 years old and we're learning how to be adults as a 14 year old would and and then other than that, I, I rely on myself. I kind of rely, I preserve my mind and keep myself out of the information uh, nuts, nutsoid thing going on because especially with social media, you get over inundated with information and you feel depressed from it. And if you realize you just stop being on social media, you give yourself a day off from your phone, you stop feeling depressed. And so you really do, I think humans need to move away from information, protect the mind. And, uh, and yeah, and do what your heart is calling you to do. Definitely. If your heart wants you to be stopping nuclear wars then you should be doing that but but uh you know I th- this is a struggling time and it's a transition and that's really all how i kind of frame it in my own mind is a transition and and yes some of us are adults already like some of us are 18 years old and 17 years old surrounded by 14 year olds and uh, and i think that that's that's kind of the, what's going on here is that we're in this different state we have a bunch of different people at different ages uh metaphoric you know, obviously i'm talking about but uh the most important part is protecting your mind and i think that people have to learn how to meditate find source uh find their find their sense of because you're not going to find your peace by stopping that nuclear war by the way right you're not you're going to find the peace by finding peace <laughs> you're finding peace by finding your source by finding your higher self and then yeah with that power you might even be more effective at stopping that nuclear war but but the bottom line is you have to find yourself you have to find peace yourself calm your mind and, uh, and, and this is all the, where the challenges are. The challenges is the human, as we're, especially as we're moving into this very, very chaotic state, and I'm certain it's coming. And, uh, and I think that's part of my blessing as a gray alien contactee, especially like Susie can relate to this, we were, we were inundated with apocalyptic visions. And this this insanity where we're like, 
oh, hey, there's an apocalypse coming. We're all calm about it. <laughs> well, yeah, apocalypse, because we know, we actually feel the transition. We actually know what's going on. But if you don't know that, oh my God, you just think, you know, the world's ending and you're, and everything's falling apart and you, and it's so stressful. And, and I think everyone will feel that way. And you have to stay, save yourself from that. You have to find a way to remove yourself from everyone feeling like this is the end times because it's not really the end times. We're going to still survive. You know, things will transition and move, but for other people, it's going to feel like we should be killing everybody now because, Hey, that we're everything, every, we just let everything go. And so now we're just doing extreme things. And I think that you're going to find that happening in the society. And, uh, and again, yeah. So I lean towards protecting our protecting your mind and finding your source, finding your higher self and, uh, and following your calling. Eventually, people are going to say, what the hell is going on? It's just too nuts. It's not enough to say it's nuts. You have to explain why it's so nuts. I look for the invention of artificial life, the cloning of human beings, uh, possible contact with extraterrestrials, possible human immortality, and at the same time, appalling acts of brutality, genocide, race baiting, uh, homophobia, famine, starvation, because uh, the systems which are in place to keep the world sane are in utterly inadequate to the forces that have been unleashed. We're incredibly adaptable to change. Put us in a desert, we survive. Put us in the jungle, we survive. Under Hitler, we survive. Under Nixon, we survive. We can put up with about anything, and it's a good thing because we're going to be tested to the limits. This is what it's like when a species prepares to depart for the stars. You don't depart for the stars under calm and orderly conditions. It's a fire in a madhouse, and that's what we have the fire in the madhouse at the end of time. This is what it's like when a species prepares to move on to the next dimension. The entire destiny of all life on the planet is tied up in this. We are not acting for ourselves or from ourselves. We are, we happen to be the point species on a transformation that will affect every living organism on this planet at its conclusion. Uh, please check out Jeff's channel. Uh, he uh, has amazing presentations and videos on all of his contact events and just experiences. So please go over to his channel and subscribe and like, follow. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on Cosmic Convergence. We'll see you next time.